Well, my friends, what a cool week it is to be in the United Kingdom because it's all in time. We've already had Dynamite, which was a super fun occasion. Now we get to the weekend, we are getting AEW all in two, technically three. Now, of course, we have to be geeks, we have to be nerds, and there's a bunch of rumors and predictions out there, so we shall go into them, and using my millimometer, we will rate them out of 10 and decide how likely are they to happen. So, get your tushes and put it in the chair. Let's go. Now, the first isn't really a massive prediction, but it would mean that somebody is coming back to AEW, even though they've only been away for a few weeks. But Mina Shirakawa magically turned up on Dynamite around about seven days ago. It's like, I'm so sad about Tony Storm and Mariah May. And given that you probably want to have Mariah May win that championship and she needs something to do coming out of the pay-per-view, especially going into All In or Out, you should say. I probably thinks Mina does turn up and goes, <laughs> sorry, Tony, I'm about to rip your head off. Norse allows Mariah to win the championship in her hometown, but of course she will still be a super duper mega heel. And then we have the start of a proper feud that can go on throughout 2024. And it would also likely mean that Tony Storm needs a new friend. And I wonder who that could be. So I am going to whack an 8 out of 10 on this because I think that is exactly what you should do. Like sometimes AEW goes, we're just going to hold off for a little bit before we get to round two. I don't want that this time. These two guys have all the heat and they have all the momentum. We should ride that all the way, probably till December. Although don't do what I'm doing now, people will laugh at you. We always had a taste of this at Dynamite that like we just already talked about because who came out for the damn dark match? Michael Oku in a mirror. Now you've got to imagine, given that we do have a casino gauntlet that is being teased as a huge thing, they should be in this. Because why the flub not? It's a great way to introduce Mike and Amira to your audience, and they don't have to win. But if you get mad about that, you need to calm down. This would be good for them and a step up to something new. Now I have loads to say about this match, but I'm going to hold it there and whack a 9 out of 10 on this. Because surely the Wednesday was a testing ground. He got a big pop. So even if they don't have a deal, you may as well put them on the Wembley show. Wouldn't that just make them feel warm and fuzzy in their tum-tums? Yes, it would. So again, there's an eight. I believe this will happen. Now I need to apologize to Mike and Amira, because I always get things wrong. I didn't mean to screw you over. Let us talk about the TBS title as well, because I've gone super shenanigan heavy on this show, but I am that guy, Goofy Wrestling for Life. But I believe Mercedes Monet will hold on to that title and Britt Baker will lose. Now, if you are going to do that, could we put some story stuff in place to protect DMD? Well, I think we possibly could. You already know that Camille is part of the Monet Bank, or the Bank of Monet, or the Mercedes Maydays. I can't remember what the name of that damn thing was. But you can't just have two people. That doesn't make a group. That doesn't make a stable. So I think we should throw a couple of other people into here. And this has been out there as a rumor. And a long-time fan of these two, I think we should totally do it. It also probably means you can do some twin magic stuff, because I am talking about the Renegade Sisters. That's right. This would be Charlotte and Robin. And if you've watched AEW Dark, or if you watch Ring of Honor, or if you have seen dynamite here and there they have been putting in the time and i tell you this i've said it time and time again they are way better than people give them credit for so this would be like an awesome time for them to take a step up which all my steps up again and teaming with mercedes well that is just gonna rule once again too it also allows you to screw over brit and they can do the twin magic thing where one comes out and one comes in this does feel like i'm reaching a little bit because again it was just one thing in the darkest corner of the internet I'm gonna whack a five on it because I'm somewhere in the middle. But as somebody who wants to see this, I will give it a 10, but don't actually put the number there. I'm just telling you, these two are way better than people give them credit for, as I keep on saying. So I hope that AEW does do this. Make me feel warm and fuzzy in my tum tum. Okay, right, let's get into the casino gauntlet because this could be crazy. First one is the hangman Adam Page, as we know, is entering this match. He could win the whole thing, and the smart thing there is that if Swerve Strickland does hold on to his championship, then two weeks later at the All Out pay per view, which we do need to start building, you can do Swerve versus hangman Adam Page, and given that they've had this amazing feud for the last year or so, well, everyone's gonna lose their mind. That would rule. However, at the same time, if Swerve is going to lose that championship, it means that the Cowboy could lose here too, which can send him even more unhinged. And do you know who could debut and actually walk away as the brand new number one contender, which would tell everyone, oh my gosh, we're treating him like a main eventer. <laughs> Get a huge pop from 50,000 people. I am talking about Ricochet. And either way, Ricochet should debut on this show. Like if you're going to run Wembley and you have a guy that everybody is going to recognize, why wouldn't you do this? It's probably going to be tough to sneak him into a country but just make sure he's wearing a giant hat. So, I am giving this a 9 out of 10. I'm not saying he's going to win the Casino Gauntlet, but I am saying that by the end of Sunday night, you are going to see Ricochet in AEW. There's also other people that could turn up as a surprise, and if we did take these two names, oh my gosh, it is just going to take the idea of All In being AEW's WrestleMania and put a big old stamp in it. 
because imagine John Moxley was in it. Now, he doesn't even have to win this damn thing if you have somebody else come in and you start a feud between these two people, which I would like. It doesn't make any sense at the moment, but the whole point is you tell me a story because you know who's been wrestling training again recently. It's Adam Cole. So I think John Moxley should enter this. I think Adam Cole should enter this. And then the next time we do a casino gauntlet, everyone's going to be like, oh, who's going to be here? I can't handle it. Sorry, so I'll give them individual gradings because I only think that's fair. John Moxley is getting a 9 out of 10. He's got to be on your biggest show of the year. Whereas Adam Cole is getting a 7. Now, once more, I need this more than life itself because Adam Cole is totally brilliant. There's a horrible time. He'd get a massive reaction from all of these fans. But, you know, there hasn't been many other updates, but I keep my fingers crossed. We also could get a couple of other debuts. And let's not forget people are tweeting this out and people are patenting and doing names and stuff. You may get the Hurt Business or whatever the name they're going to be called. I suppose it could be like the Pain Company. Don't do that. This would be MVP Shelton Benjamin and Bobby Lashley. And they are all free agents right now. Now, listen, it is tough because you don't want to overshadow anybody else's debut. But what did we do it all out 2021? We had Brian Dennis, we had Adam Cole, and everybody thought this was the greatest thing ever. So why can't we do it again here? Again, it's Wembley. Could go even further with this too, <laughs> because maybe Shane McMahon is on the pay-per-view. I don't know. Once again, you would be kind of serving your audience because it's going to be a lot of hardcore fans. And I need this as a content creator because I promise you, I will make 78,573 videos about this. And all of them are me going, <laughs> wrestling is great. Now, I actually think the Hurt Business, whatever they shall be called, we should leave for a later time because, again, we don't want to overload this. So I'll give it a 3 out of 10, although I do want to see them in AEW. And shame it, man, you've got a whack of five on it. But that picture didn't do the rounds for shibs and giggles. There's a reason for it. As of me talking to you, we don't know what it is. And I'll say this quietly so you don't get too mad. I do want to see this because, again, I'm an agent of chaos. And I also think we're going to get a big announcement at the end of All In because don't forget at the end of 2023, they went, oh, hi, we're going to do Wembley again next year. It was like, wait, what? Where did that come from? Well, we know they're not going to do all in 2025 at Wembley Stadium. So do you know what I think they're going to do? They shall announce all out and it'll be back in the UK. And this could be the O2 Arena. It could be one of the Manchester stadiums. It could be whatever you want. But if you did all out a little bit later on in the year, you could probably do this. I'm only going to give it a five because I pulled this out of my rectum. But I think that would be a good idea. And then you've just reversed the streams. And while the Ghostbusters told us never to cross those, what do they know? Nothing. Which does bring me to the main event because I just do have this overwhelming feeling, especially because he went crazy on Dynamite, that we may be about to see Brian Danielson's last full-time match. Just the more I think about it, I'm like, while it would be amazing for him to win the World Championship, there's something so much more emotional about Swerve Strickland leaving the win after he's got the victory, which he can ride for the next 10 years or so, with Brian standing there and looking across all of those people and just going, man, I went out who I always wanted to go out on my back. Let's face it, the American Dragon actually wants to lose every single match. Ultimately, I do not care because Brian Danielson has given so much to wrestling. However, he wants to leave is what we should do. And seriously, if this is the last time he ever does wrestle on a full-time schedule, we should appreciate it as much as possible. He said this on Dynamite, I'm the flubbing best wrestler in the world. And you damn right he is. If you are talking about top 10 lists, actually cut it down to top 5. He will always be there. So I'm going to put a 7 out of 10 that Brian Danielson does indeed walk away from the sport full time without a championship belt. And also that is the exact opposite of what we did with Sting. That just makes it feel a little bit more novel and a bit more interesting. But I tell you, you don't think you're going to have water coming out your seeing devices. Well, you know how the song goes. You've got another thing coming. Now, more important than all of this, make sure you leave me a comment below and let me know what you think is going to happen at all. And again, these are like rumors that you may have heard. You've got to put a number on them. Otherwise, it means diddly squat. Also, click the video on the screen, which is ups and downs for AEW Dynamite, so you can get my live experience of the show. Like the video, share the video, and subscribe. But otherwise, if you are going to the pay-per-view, just have a terrific time. It's the point of wrestling, and I will see you there.